Well, this week, the question that we're dealing with is a question that was the number one question, one of the top questions that we received over and over and over and over again. And it's the question that you asked and you asked for it. It's the question, how do you heal from hurt? And just, we're going to take an inventory real quick right now. The land, Orange City, Journey Church Anywhere, Deltona. If you've ever been hurt by somebody, just raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Keep them up, keep them up. Come on, hi. I, I just want, now look around, look around, look around, look around. Here's what I know. All of us have been hurt by people. All of us have been hurt. And the question that came in, that there were different forms that they would be like, hey, how do I deal with the hurt that was caused by a coworker? They hurt me and I, I don't want to go back to work now because they hurt me. For some of you, the question was, how do I deal with the hurt that was caused by a spouse? For some of you, it's how do I deal with the hurt that was caused by an ex-spouse? Because now we're exes, but I still got to deal with kids and we still got to show up and we got to celebrate Christmas together and Thanksgiving and all these things. But I don't even want to be in the same room with you. So how do I deal with hurt when somebody I can't even separate from but I still got to see them. For some of you, the hurt was that your mom chose alcohol over you. For some of you, it was because your dad abandoned you. For some of you, your parents were just jerks. And when we talk about Father's Day, there really is no good memory of a father because in your mind, your father was not someone who should be respected or loved. That your father hurt you. And that as you go through life, you will always be hurt by people. But it's how you begin to deal with that hurt that really will define how you live your life. And what normally happens as we go through hurt is when people hurt us, the first question we ask over and over again is why? Why? But what if the question why is not really the question? What if there's a better question that we can begin to ask? Because when people hurt us, we might never get to the bottom of why. But the question I want to begin to ask is, how long will you allow the hurt that was done to you to continue to hurt you into your future. So yes, they hurt you and what they did was unfair, but how long will you take the hurt that was done to you and allow it to hurt you into your future? Because people say all the time, well, I'll never get over what he did to me. I'll never get over what she did to me. Oh, okay. So that means what they did way back here, you're going to allow to destroy you all the way into your future. Why would you do that? You don't like them in the first place. Why would you allow them, stupid people, them who hurt you, to continue to hurt you? Well, you say, well, I never thought of it that way. Well, the question is, how long are you going to deal with the hurt? And you go, well, well I, I don't want to deal with it very much longer. I, I want to be done with it. And so then the question is, well, then how do you heal from the hurt? Because if you don't deal with it, you'll never heal from it. And the good news is God knows that we struggle with relational hurt. And so he didn't leave us abandoned to come up with whatever suggestions we wanted to find healing. He actually speaks into our souls of how we can find healing when people have hurt us. And where we're going to find this is in Romans chapter 12, an incredible book where Paul is writing and he deals with this big, big topics. Like how do we have a relationship with the living God? And he talks about that through Christ Jesus, we can now have a relationship with God. That There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And he spends like the first half talking about our relationship with God and how Jesus Christ absorbed the wrath of God so that we can now have a relationship with God. And then what he talks about the latter half of Romans is says, okay, now that you have a relationship with God, how can you begin to have relationships with people? And when it's an interesting, when you read the Bible, that the Bible is really split into two main topics, how to have a relationship with God and how to have a relationship with people, because we really struggle with relationships. And so we go to Paul and Paul says, I, I want to give you some insight of how you can begin to heal from hurt so that you don't continue to allow the hurt of your past to continue to hurt your future. Because God wants to liberate you and heal you. And so Romans chapter 12, verse 14, here's where Paul gives us some practical guidance. He says, bless those who persecute you. To which we go, what, Paul? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. I don't want to bless them. And he says, I know, I know you don't. Bless them and do not curse them. Because I know what you want to do. You want to curse those who cursed you. You don't want to bless those who cursed you. But Paul says, I I'm giving you a new way. I want you to bless those who've cursed you. I want you to care for the person so much that you rejoice with those who rejoice and that you mourn with those who actually are mourning, that you live in harmony with one another. But, but you don't understand what they did. You don't understand what my coworkers did. You don't know, understand what my ex did. You don't understand what my friend did when they betrayed me. You don't understand what they did. And Paul says, oh, OK, I get it. Do not be proud. 
but be willing to associate with people of a low position, which means be willing to associate with people who disagree with you. People who have different viewpoints than you. Do not be conceited. Don't think that your way is the only right way. Don't think that your hurt is the only hurt. Don't get so consumed on you. Repay no one evil for evil. Don't hurt them because they hurt you. Don't pay them back because they hurt you. So Paul says, don't repay anyone for evil for evil, but give thought. Give thought to do what is honorable, what is good in the sight of all. Think about the hurt in such a way that you can actually think of ways to bring healing to the hurt that was caused to you. That Paul says, I, I want to introduce a concept that if you can begin to get, understand it, that how you think about hurt and how you respond to that hurt will actually has the ability to heal the hurt that was caused to you, that you can actually be hurt and yet experience good in the situations that you've come across. But Paul, we go, but Paul, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't understand. You don't know what they did to me. You, you don't know how they treated me. You, you don't know what I went through. You don't know the things that they said to me. You, you, don't, you can't comprehend it, Paul. Come on, come on. You lived in a time before social media. I mean, come on, Paul. Now people can say what they want to say, when they want to say it, and they don't even care anymore. Paul, I'm living in some tough days. I mean, Paul, this is hard. This is hard. This is hard. This is hard. And Paul says, I know, I know. If it is possible... As far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone, which means there's some people you will not be able to have peace with. But here's the good news. Even if you can't have peace in the relationship, you can still have peace about the relationship. Even if you never have peace with the person, you can still have peace in your life when you think about that person. So he says, let's live at peace. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge and I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. To which we go, why would I do that? Because in doing this, you'll heap burning coals on his head. To which we go, yes, that's what I want. Lord, let the fire of heaven fall. You thought that, right? Come on, don't look pious at me. You thought that the land, you thought it, Deltona, Orange City, you thought it. God, let your fire smite them. That's not the heart of Paul. He's getting to something. When, when you read throughout scripture, the calls are imagery of when hearts are transformed. Paul says, your decisions of how you respond to conflict can move in such a way that actually can wake people up to begin to respond in a way that actually brings healing instead of more hurt in the relationship. So how do we do that? Verse 21 is so key. So do not be overcome by evil. And here's where Paul begins to address something that's so profound. When we think of evil, we think of actions. But when Paul talks about evil, he talks about force. He talks about there's a cosmic power. And that when you are hurt, what tends to happen is you can actually open up your life because someone hurts you. The way that you respond to hurt can actually open up your life that you actually allow evil to enter in and begin to destroy every good thing that God wants to do in your life. That when you're hurt, you are at a position and you're at a vulnerable position not to be hurt more by them. No, no, no. Paul says there's something deeper going on. When you've been hurt, you're at a vulnerable position that you actually can be overcome, defeated by evil. So don't be overcome by evil, but he says, don't be overcome by evil, but you can actually overcome evil with good. That, that you can actually respond and deal with evil and deal with the hurt in such a way that it actually begins to heal the hurt that you've experienced and begins to allow you to walk in goodness. That you can respond to hurt and how you respond to it in such a way that you can begin to overcome the evil that was done to you so that you can begin to experience good. And the word overcome is actually a military term. 
And Paul says, your response when hurt has the power to overcome the hurt and actually bring healing into your life. But here's what I want you to hear. I want you to hear. I got a lot of background on this. A lot of background. This is hard. Hard. And the reason it's so hard is because no one really teaches us this. Because what we're taught is when people hurt us, we have two major responses. Our first response, I'm going to make you pay. So we go all scorched earth, right? I'm going to hurt you. You hurt me. And I'm going to, I'm going to raise it up a level and I'm just going to go nuclear on you. You hurt me. That's it. I'm going after you. And many of us, that's the way we go. The other side is we go, well, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm going to avoid it. This is where we get into, I'm just going to cancel you and write you off because I'm not going to deal with you anymore. And we're stuck between these two extremes in our world. We're stuck between the extreme of scorched earth or cancel culture. And Paul says, there's a better way because if all you do is live in these extremes, what you tend to do is you actually do not overcome evil, but you allow evil to begin to overcome you. You allow the power of evil to begin to saturate your life and overcome you. So how do we begin? How do we begin to find healing when we've been hurt? Because when we're hurt, we have the opportunity to allow evil, the power of evil, to so begin to, to overwhelm us that it destroys us. How do we do that? Very practically, here's what Paul begins with. He says, the first decision that you have to make is you have to choose not to let hurt take root. You see, you can't choose whether you're going to be hurt in a relationship or not. What you can choose to do is what you're going to do when the hurt happens in a relationship. You have a decision and your decision has power. You see, when we get hurt, what tends to happen is we take that hurt and we bring it really, really close. You hurt me and I absorb that hurt and I bring it in. And Paul says, when you take hurt and you bring it in, the problem is, is that hurt begins to overcome you. That hurt begins to open you up that you begin to experience the power of evil. It begins to destroy every good thing that God wants to do in your life. That when you're hurt, it opens your life up to experience greater hurt and experience greater evil. And so when you're hurt, you can either choose to overcome that hurt or you can choose to allow that hurt to overcome you. And the way you do it is, okay, I've been hurt, so what am I gonna do with it now? Am I gonna keep it out here, or am I gonna allow that hurt to come in and personalize that hurt and bring it in? So think about hurt, and I want you to think about, this is so helpful for me, when people hurt me, I literally, I literally, I think about the hurt and I hold it. And I hold it out here. And I go, I know what you wanna do. The words that were said, the betrayal that happened, the things that you said about me, the things that were wrong, that are so unfair. I know you want to come in here, but I'm not going to allow you to overcome me. I'm going to allow in this moment, I'm going to make a choice not to absorb this hurt, but begin to find healing from the hurt that was caused to me. So we take the hurt and it's out here. And at that point, you go, I'm not going to let you in. 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 Push two people say, I'm not going to let you in. I'm not going to allow this hurt to begin to overcome me. Because when I do, it has power to destroy me. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, the writer of Hebrews says, make every effort to live at peace with everyone. To which we go, but you don't, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know what they did. And we think the benefit is for them. Like when we get hurt, we think, well, well I, I, I'm not going to seek peace because that would be unfair. That would be allowing them to win. And Paul says, that's a wrong way to think about it. The writer of Hebrews says, that's a really wrong way to think about it. Because make every effort to live at peace with everyone. Why would you do that? See to it, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. You see, when I take this hurt and I bring it in, what it begins to do in my life is it clouds me and it covers my eyes that I no longer see the goodness of God. All I can see is the pain that was done to me. 
that when I bring this in, what happens is it cuts me off that I can no longer see and begin to praise God for his goodness and his faithfulness and his love and his mercy. Because what I've done in that moment is I've allowed that hurt to become the lens in which I view everything in my life. And when I view through life through the lens of hurt, everything will hurt. You see, I'll never see redemption. I'll never see the goodness of God. Not because God isn't working good. It's because I'm choosing to bring that hurt in and absorb myself in it. And so he says, don't do that because you think, you think peace is for the benefit of the other person, but it's not for their benefit I'm asking you to do this. Paul says, the reason I want you to do this, I don't want evil to overcome you. I don't want you to be so blinded that you miss out on the grace of God and the goodness of God. So don't allow that and make sure, make sure, because when you begin to do that, make sure that no bitter root begin to grow up and cause trouble to defile many. So when Paul talks about hurt, he talks about a root of bitterness. Now, where do roots operate? Roots always operate in the subterranean level of our lives. What we do when we bring hurt in is we allow that hurt to go in and we absorb it. And as you absorb that hurt, the roots of that hurt begin to spread throughout every facet of your life. So it spreads out through your life physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. This is why people who struggle with rage throughout their life, when you struggle with rage and anger, you're more prone to struggle with depression, more prone to struggle with addiction, more prone to knock at least 20 to 30 years off your life, more prone to end up in jail and broken and hurting. Why? Because when you allow the roots in, those roots begin to spread through every area of your life. And as roots begin to spread, what is the purpose of a root? A root then feeds, feeds the very essence of who you are. So when you allow a hurt in, it absorbs it. And as you absorb it, you begin to feed the hurt. And you, all you begin to do is your mind gets consumed on the hurt. All you do is you think about what they did and you think about what they said and you think about how they walked out and you think about how they betrayed you and you think about what they wrote and you're, you're just consumed on it, consumed on it, consumed on it. You go to bed, you're consumed on it. You go to sleep, you're consumed on it. You wake up, you're consumed on it. Your mind can't get off of it. When you enter there, that means you've allowed this hurt in and you've allowed that hurt to begin to consume you so that now you're feeding that hurt and what you feed, it grows. It grows to the point that you see it and you go, I'll never be able to get away from this. I'll never be able to move on from this. I'll never experience healing from this because you've allowed this root to step in and you absorbed it and you fed it and now you're consumed in it because it's growing. It's the reason why you keep feeding it. So every time you think about them, you think about, I wanna go back and you always picture yourself as so I will tell them what to do. And you have the right words to say and you have the right actions, you know, and, and now it becomes an action packed movie because you're going to punch them in the face or you're going to karate kid kick them and you're going to like tell them off. And it's never about just you and that person. It's always in a room with other people, isn't it? Because they hurt you and now you're going to hurt them and you're going to make them pay. And Paul says, I know that if you do that, what you're doing though, is you're allowing yourself to be overcome by evil. And so he says, you have to understand these roots are out there and the roots come. And he says something very interesting. He says, once it begins to take root in your life, it defiles, not just you, but it defiles who many that what happens in that moment is not only does the hurt begin to hurt you, but the hurt that hurt you begins to hurt the people who are closest to you. begins to defile you. It begins to destroy you. And not just you, it begins to destroy the people that you actually love. That hurt people hurt people. And we tend to hurt the people that we love the most. And what we tend to end up doing is we tend to take out this hurt on someone that never caused the hurt because we never dealt with the hurt in the first place. But because that hurt is now within us, it's so consumed us, now it's rooted in us, now it says, it's so powerful, now it begins to defile all these people that if we were honest with ourselves, we'd go, I never wanted to hurt them in the first place, but you did, why? Because you allowed it to absorb and you never kept it out here. You allowed it to take root in your life and you never began to deal with it. And so the writer says, listen, we gotta get to the root of the problem, we gotta begin to deal with it. So how? Colossians tells us. Colossians 3. But bear with each other and forgive one another. 
If any of you have any grievances against someone, forgive them. And we go, I can't can't forgive them. I can't forgive them because forgiveness is for their benefit. I'm just going to let them off the hook. And again, Paul writes, no, forgiveness is not for their benefit. It's for your benefit. It's for you. Forgiveness means I'm not going to make you pay. I'm not going to make you pay for what you did. But I'm releasing this. I'm releasing this. I'm letting this go. I'm not going to absorb it. I'm not going to meditate on it. I'm not going to keep playing in my mind over and over again, rehearsing. If I saw your face, what I would say to you, I'm not going to keep going over and over again, the pain that you caused me. I'm choosing not to bring that in, but I'm going to keep it out here. And I'm going to begin not to bring it personally in so that I personify this hurt. And so he says, well, how can we do that? Forgive as the Lord forgave you. You see, the only way I can forgive is I have to keep the mindset that I've been forgiven much through Jesus Christ, that Jesus didn't make me pay for what I did, that he paid the price for my rebellion on the cross so that I can live in forgiveness and live in goodness. And the only way that I can truly forgive is is if I align my life and remember the forgiveness was shown to me on the cross. So he says, you need to continue to forgive. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Why? Why? Because then you allow the the peace of Christ to rule, to dwell, to overcome your heart. See, if I bring it in, you tracking with this? If I bring it in, evil overcomes me. But if I keep it out here and go, I'm going to live in forgiveness. As I live in that, what begins to happen is now instead of evil overcoming me, now the peace of Christ begins to overcome my heart. Now I have the peace of God that's beginning to work in my heart and I can begin to see the goodness of God because I've allowed this sense of not holding it in, but bringing it out here and going, no, 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 no. I'm not going to allow you to begin to absorb and become a root of bitterness in my life that's going to destroy me. See, it's a choice that you have to make. It's a choice that you have to make every time you're offended, every time people hurt you. Listen, I've had a lot of people hurt me and every time they hurt me, this is hard. But it's the only way, it's the only way that I allow myself to continue to experience healing is because I can't allow that hurt to come in and begin to absorb and begin to consume me so that a root of bitterness begins to destroy all the good things that are there. I want the peace of God to guard my heart. So we have our, we have the problem and it's out here. Okay, okay, okay. Now what do I do? with Now what do I do with it? Because I'm not going to allow it in here. And so what we begin to do now is we identify why you're really hurt. So I begin to identify, okay, this hurt me. And I ask the question, why does this hurt me? Paul writes in in Romans 12, 17, he says, repay no one evil for evil, but give what? Give what? Come on. I don't know what it's like in Deltona, but in Orange City right now, I need everybody. Orange City, the land, Deltona. What does it say? But give. That's our problem, isn't it? We don't give thought, we react. We don't give thought, we just let them have it. We don't give thought, we get, I'm gonna give them a piece of my mind and what's in your mind is not good. <laughs> he says, I, I, I know what you wanna do. Give thought to do what is honorable, what is good in the sight of all. That when we hold it out here, we can begin to really begin to ask some questions. We can ask the question, right now I'm angry and you're angry over a hurt that was done to you. And you go, okay, why am I angry? Well, I'm angry because they hurt me. Okay. Well, why are you angry? Because they hurt me, hurt you. Well, because this is what they did to me. And and, and many times, if that's you, here's where you got to go. Hold on. You didn't answer why you answered what? Why am I so angry? Because they hurt me. Well, why are you angry? Because they hurt you. Because of what they did to me. Well, you didn't answer why you're angry. You just told me what they did to me. So let's go back to the beginning. You see how the cycle happens? You see, you never experience healing because you never get to the cause of why you're so angry. Unless you hold it out here, you have to begin to examine it because once you personify it and bring it in, you lose all objectivity and you just begin to react. 
And so Paul is so brilliant. He's deep here. He says, when you're hurt, if you hold it out here, you have to begin to ask, why does this hurt me so much? Well, because I'm angry. Well, why are you angry? And when Paul talks about, and when scripture talks about anger, anger is not a sin. Anger actually is a God-given emotion that God gave you that's a response to hurt. You can actually be angry and not sin. See, anger is a choice of what you do with that anger and how you allow that anger to begin to flow throughout your life. So when people hurt me, my natural response is to be angry. And because the reason is anger is a natural response, a God-given response that he gave you, that you get angry over someone or something that you love is being threatened. So when something in your life is being threatened or someone in your life is being threatened, it's good to get angry. Anger is not wrong. There's certain things you need to be angry about. You need to be angry about injustice. You need to be angry about abuse. You need to be angry about things that you see in the world that breaks the heart of God. We need to be angry. Like that's a good thing. That that there's something within us that goes, this is wrong. Because something that we see that we love and something that we see that we care about is being threatened. But what happens, and here's the problem. Here's the problem. The problem is that anger always flows from love. And the issue that we have is that we love the wrong things. Most of the time, what I love is I don't love you and I don't love God. I love me. And why I get angry and why I'm hurt is because I love my way. I love my rights. I love my opinions. I love my expectations. And I love what I want to do. I tell you all the time, my wife and I would have the perfect marriage if she would just agree with me about everything. We would never have a fight. I tell her that all the time. Hey, babe, you want to stop fighting? Here's what you do. Just agree with me about everything. Because if you agree with me, we'll never struggle again. You see, because in that moment, what do I really love? I don't love her. I love me. You see, we have, we've set our affections on the wrong thing, that we love the wrong things and we love ourselves more than we love others and we love God. And that's an issue of the heart. This is why it says in scripture, it says, above all things, you need to make sure that you guard your heart. Why? Because out of the heart, everything else flows. So what my heart is attached to That's what's going to direct the very attitudes of my life. So if my heart's attached to the wrong thing, then when things happen to me, then I'm going to get angry. I'm going to get upset because in that moment, it's attacking the thing that my heart is attached to. And our hearts get so attached to my expectations and my wants and my wishes and my desires that we miss it. That We miss the very thing that, that that we are called to be guarding against. So the writer of Proverbs and what Paul is getting at is, hey, When you hold it out here, you begin to examine and you ask a deeper question. Why? Why? And Shane and I were talking about this a while back ago because sometimes I like watching videos where people cut people off on traffic and they do crazy things. And I, it, it, it's a fascination. Sometimes I, I love it when, you know, people start arguing and I'm like, oh, this is funny. And I'm laughing. And she says, what are you laughing about? And I'm saying, well, it's funny. Can you believe? I mean, this guy, he got pulled over. So now he's mad and he's like wrecking this guy. And I was like, it's crazy. And, and here's what she said. Well, what if that was you? <laughs> I, I, I said, well, I would be mad. But why is it okay to look at injustice that's happening on a video and laugh at it. But if it happened in my life, my own life, I would get tucked off about it because what I'm really in love with and what I'm really angry at is not injustice. What I'm really angry about is you were unjust to me. So as I struggle with this, I ask this question, why am I so hurt over this that I want to hurt other people because of this? Well, why does this so bother me that it's keeping me up at night? And you can say, well, what what happened? What happened? No, you're just repeating yourself. You have to dig a little deeper. Most of the time, why I get so upset is because I'm not getting what I want. 
And if you don't come to terms with that, here's what's going to happen. You're going to go from relationship to relationship to relationship, and the same problems that were in one relationship are going to happen in another relationship. And you know why? Because what's in you is going to come out of you no matter who's with you. This is why you have to wrestle with the deeper question. Why am I so hurt over this? And I can't answer that, but you have to, if you truly want to experience healing, this is the hard part of healing because you can't blame your way to healing. You can't argue your way to healing. You can't get so rageful you're in healing. The only way to get to healing is you have to start here and you have to pull out whatever that hurt is and ask, why does this hurt me so much? And when you're there, then you now understand There's a part that I play in this, and there's a part that they play in this. But until you get there, you're automatically, you're going to assume it's their fault, it's their fault, it's their fault, it's their fault. But that's where you go back and say, hold on, now I see. They have a part and I have a part. And once you understand their part and your part, now you begin to address it. Now you begin to address it. So what do you do? You begin to address the problem and don't tax the other person. We want the opposite. We want to avoid the problem and attack the person. Right? We want to just, I don't have a problem. The problem is them. And so we attack them and we attack them and we attack them. But that's not going to find healing. Proverbs 15 verse 1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. That when I'm hurt, what tends to happen if I don't really examine it, What tends to happen is, is I allow people to experience my wrath because I want to hurt them because they hurt me. But in doing that, I actually make a problem worse. Have you ever said something that after you said it, you realize, whoo, I just took a level one problem. Now I made it a level two problem. I do this with my wife. I'll be sitting there and I'll say something because I'm mad. And I just took a, a, a level two fight and I just raised it up to a level four fight. And I'm like, why did I go there? And in the moment, but I'm mad and I'm mad and I I just got so much rage. In that very moment, what you have to do is understand your words have power and your words can either stir up and actually bring more anger and more wrath and more frustration. And so it says in Proverbs 12, verse 18, it says, there is one whose harsh words are like a sword thrust, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. That when you begin to address issues, your words can actually begin to stir up and actually cause more hurt or your words can actually bring healing. Now, next week, we're going to talk or not next week. In two weeks, we're going to talk really in depth on this because this is a whole topic in and of itself. And we're going to address this, but I I have to begin to deal with it in this concept because I want you to understand your words have power. And here's what ends up happening. When we enter into a situation, when someone hurts us, We go, okay, let's deal with it. And we go into the situation and like, I'm going to deal with this problem. And so then we start swinging and we start going after the problem and we just start cutting and they need to hear this because they messed up and somebody needs to tell them that they are wrong in what they did. And we just start going off and going off and going off. And the scripture says, be very careful, be very careful because harsh words like sore thrust. They don't, they don't heal. Because all I'm doing is I'm attacking the person. Attacking the person never brings healing to the situation. But the wise, instead of bringing the axe, they bring the pruning shears. You see, I can deal with a situation Hey, we need to address this. But by addressing it, I'm not hurting the whole plan. By addressing it, I'm not hurting the person. I'm dealing with this issue. You see, real love doesn't come with an ax. Real love comes with the pruners and say, hey, there's some things we need to talk about. There's some issues that we're having in this relationship that it's hurting me. And we need to begin to address some of these issues. And I'm not coming at you with an ax. I don't want to hurt you. I want to deal with some of the issues that are hurting us. What would happen 
If the person that you're so mad at who hurts you, what if you put down the ax and you picked up the shears? If you actually begin to address the issues instead of just trying to attack the person. This is the problem with our current culture. We don't know how to do this. So every time someone wrongs us, we pick up the ax. Instead of beginning just to address some of the issues. This is how I've lived my life. This is how people get mad at me and they get ticked off at me and they want me to come with an ax and I don't. And they get so mad at me because I don't come with axes. I always come to deal with the issue, which means I can still love people. Even at the same time, I hate what they're doing and it breaks my heart that they're doing it because it hurts me. This is how we bring healing. It's time to put down the ax. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk about the issues. You say, well, well, they don't listen to me. They don't listen to me. They just want to keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting. This is why I love what Paul says. He says, well, if it is possible, which means sometimes it's not going to be possible. Sometimes you, sometimes you got people who do not want to have reconciliation. Sometimes you got people who just want to keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting. And Paul says, I know, but if it's possible, as far as it depends on you, not them, this is liberating. As far as it depends upon you, live at peace with everyone. That means I can actually have peace in me and about this relationship, even if I never have peace in this very relationship or with that other person. That's how we heal. So sometimes people won't listen to you. Sometimes people are just jerks. Sometimes people that you're trying to, that hurt you are dead. Okay. As far as it depends upon you, they might never say they're sorry. They might never, ever, ever apologize to you. But you know what? That's all right. Because as far as it depends upon you, you can actually live at peace with everyone. You can live at peace. Even if they never, ever want peace. We go, oh, oh, oh but, but, but. But what if I do? What if they, what if they just keep coming at me? What, what do I do? And what, I just, I, oh, it's just so hard. Where do I turn to? Paul says, at that moment, here's what you do. You give your hurt to God. Amen. You give your hurt to God. Romans 12, 19. Do not take revenge. Don't take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room. Leave room. Leave room for God's wrath. Leave room for God to begin to work in your situation. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. That God says, when you have this hurt, when you have this burden, remember, we don't absorb it. We keep it out here. We begin to ask, why am I so hard? Why am I so hurt? We begin to identify it. And then as that moment, we can begin to address, okay, I got some issues. Let's address this. That person says, I don't want any of it. And you're still hurt. What do you do? In that point, God says, give it to me. Give it to me. I'll pick it up. I'll fight for you. I'll deal with it. I'll overcome it. Give me opportunity, God says, to move. Give me opportunity to work. Proverbs 12, 22, or 20, 22 says, so do not say I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord. And here's the promise. God will deliver you every single time. Every time. The promise that God gives you is that when you give him the hurt that you have, he will deal with it in a way that allows you to experience healing. God, I got this hurt and I don't know what to do with it. And God says, give it to me. Give it to me. But we go, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 God. No, 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 no. No. If I don't, who will? 
God, and, and, and if I don't make them pay, who will make them pay? And God says, I will. Did you realize that every hurt that was caused to you will be paid for? Either that person will pay eternally separated from God in a place called hell or the infinite precious blood of Jesus Christ, the wrath of God was absorbed because Jesus paid for it on Calvary. It will be paid for. God says, give it to me. Give it to me. I care for you. I know you're hurting. Give it to me. You see, you know what it's at really the root of conflict? The root of conflict is not about self-control. The root of conflict is can God be trusted? The root of every conflict is if I don't trust God to take my hurt, then I have to make them pay for the hurt that was caused to me. And God says, that is only going to bring more evil into your life. God says, give me your hurt. If you give me your hurt, I will work in a way that brings healing to you. I work in it. But we go, what? Well, no, 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 this is mine. It's so hurt. And God says, I know, I know, I know. But this isn't an issue of who's going to pay. This is an issue of do you trust me? See, because if you can't trust God, then you got to deal with it. And God says, good luck. Keep fighting. Keep doing it. Keep doing what you want. You're just going to be overcome with evil. I want you to do this, not because I'm trying to get, you, get them away. No, no. I'm trying to heal you. And if you give it to me, if you will trust me with your hurt, I will deal with it in a way that is so good. And so I want you to think, think of the hurt that was caused to you. I know you're already mad at me and you're already like, well, Pastor James, I'll write you an email because I came to church. I'll try to get happy. And now you're making me think of hurt. No, I just want you to think about the hurt. And I want you to hold it out here. Say, I'm not going to bring it in. And God, let me begin to address it. Why does this really hurt me to the point that I want to hurt someone else made in the image of God? And once I begin to address that, I can begin to address, I'm going to, I'm going to deal with the problem, not attack this person. And God, if I can't, I will cast all my cares upon you because you care. Can you trust God with your hurt? If you can't, then you have to bear it. And God says, I didn't send my son to die for you so that you can bear it. I sent my son so that he can bear the weight of your hurt so that you can find forgiveness and redemption for your soul. So to all of our locations, the land, Orange City, Deltona, Journey Church, anywhere, will you pray for me? Pray with me right now. Father, I thank you that you gave us a way to actually deal with our hurt and deal with a way that doesn't allow evil to overcome us, but allows us actually to overcome evil. And so God, I know there's a lot of hurt in all of our locations, and I know there's a lot of hurt in people. God, would right now, when we give you that hurt, we give it to you. And just tell him, God, I give you this hurt. God, I'm struggling. Tell him, God, I'm struggling with this. They, I'm mad. I mean, what they did to me was so wrong. And God says, I know, give it to me. And so, Lord, we give you this hurt knowing that you can heal us. And so, God, may we be people who live in peace so that the peace of God begins to move in our hearts and move in our lives. Thank you that you gave us a way that we can find healing from the hurt that others have caused us. We didn't choose to get hurt, but we can choose what we're going to do with our hurt. And God, we want to do it in a way that honors you because that's how we receive peace. Thank you, Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and God's people shouted. Amen. Amen.